Welcome back to the channel. Cody here. If you watched my last video, you saw that I was catching crappie on a double jig rig setup. So as you saw several times, I caught crappie two at a time, one off of each jig. The way I tie the double jig is a little bit different than what other folks tie it. So I'm going to get this camera turned around and show you how I tie it. And then I'll show you two more common ways people tie this setup. Okay, I've got my jigs laid out that I'm going to tie on this double jig setup. I have a 16th ounce and a 32nd ounce. You want to put your lighter jig on your line. And just let that run up your line freely. On the bottom jig, the variation of a knot I tie is a cinch knot. But it's a pretty quick knot to tie. And it's an easy knot to tie when your hands are cold. Get yourself enough tag line, about six or eight inches, to run around your main line and your thumb three times. Take those loops off your thumb, run your tag in through those loops, then cinch that knot down. You can wet the line if you need to. You're just going to cinch that clear down to the eyelet of the jig. And cut your tag end off, leaving about a quarter inch of tag line there. So that's the knot that I tie most of the time on my bottom jig. For the top jig, this is where I like to tie a loop knot. I like my jigs to be spaced about a foot to 14 inches apart. So get your jig spacing, then take both lines, wrap them around your middle an index finger like that. Take that jig through your loop three times. Now here's the important part, the way I like to do this top loop. I like that loop to be very close to the jig eye. I don't want this jig hanging off my main line three or four inches. I only want it to hang off that main line about a half inch to an inch. So I hold the loop and the jig in the main line toward the head of the jig and I work that loop down. Continue to work that loop down until you're very close to that jig eye and then you can cinch things down. So as you can see that knot is only about a half inch away from the loop of that jig eye. So when you hold your line out, that jig's only going to dangle off there about a half inch or so. The reason I like that loop not to be so close to that jig is if I'm fishing around brush or other cover, I feel like I'm not going to hang up nearly as much. As I talk about these two weights of jig heads of putting the lighter on the top and the heavier on the bottom, the reason for that is, is when you cast, you want your heavy jig to be able to pull the line and kind of pull your top jig with it. That's going to help prevent a lot of twists. Otherwise, if your lighter jig were on the bottom and your top jig were the heavy jig, as they're falling through the water column, that top jig is going to beat that bottom jig down, and you're going to have a likelihood of that bottom jig kind of wrapping up and getting tangled up in your line. Now let me talk about two different variations on how to tie a knot on this bottom jig. So in this variation, you're going to do the same thing with your top jig, exact same loop knot, and everything. But on the bottom jig, I'm going to tie a Palomar knot. The fundamental difference between a Palomar knot on this bottom jig versus the first cinch knot that I tied comes down to the strength of the knot, which is not so much the knot itself. The key of the strength comes right here. It's when you bring this line back through the eye of the jig, you now have two lines through the eye of the jig instead of one. That's the strength of the Palomar knot. To finish tying this, it's very simple. Do an overhand knot. Cinch it down a little bit. Okay, about right there. You don't want it all the way snug because you'll snug it on the final step. Take your loop, go over the jig. I like to go from the hook side back. Loop it over, pull everything up, so it's nice and clean. So you'll have your main line, your loop, and your tag end. Start cinching things down. 
I like to keep some tension on my jig as I'm doing that to keep that knot nice and clean. So, so pull it down till it's snug. And again, you can wet your line to help with this. Normally I would. And that's the Palomar knot. Cut your tag end off. Again, leaving about a quarter of an inch. And you're done. So again, the strength of the Palomar knot is because you have two lines through the eye of your jig. The last way you see a lot of folks tie the double jig setup is they tie a loop knot on this bottom jig. I'm not going to go through that since I've already gone through the loop knot once. The process is the same. The only difference is on this bottom jig, you really don't need to be concerned about the loop being that close to your eyelet. It can hang a little bit more freely. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Thank you for watching.